In this video, we're gonna look at vertex form of absolute value functions. So our equation is listed right here, f of x is equal to a times the absolute value x minus h plus k. One thing to note, a can't be zero, uh, because then in that case, this would just be a linear function. Um, and so we wanna make sure a is not zero. And let's think what these variables stand for again. Remember, a is our stretch or our shrink, and that's also where our reflection could also be located if a is negative. Um, H is our horizontal translation. So we're gonna shift left or right. Remember that's opposite of what it looks like. So if it's minus a number, we go right, plus a number, we go left. And then K is our vertical translation. So that is up or down. And that is what it looks like. Plus a number, we go up, minus a number, we go down. The vertex of our absolute value or the point at where our absolute value changes direction is located at H comma K. And so when we're graphing in vertex form, there's really two methods on how to graph. You could plot the vertex first and then just find one point on your absolute value function. Then you can reflect that point over what's called the line of reflection, which brings us to this point down here. It says any absolute value function can be written in vertex form and its graph is symmetric about the line x equals h. Okay, so if you remember, x equals a number is a vertical line. And so when we have our absolute value functions, let's say we have one that looks something like this, there is this imaginary line that goes right through the vertex. And the two parts of our absolute value graph are symmetric about that line, which means a point that's on the right will be the same distance to the left of that line. So it makes it easy to graph because if we can find the vertex and then we can find one other point, then we can just reflect that point to the other side of the line of reflection and we can draw our absolute value graph. Okay, so let's look at an example, and we'll do those two methods. Okay, so the first method we said was finding the vertex. The second method is going to be actually performing the transformations. So we'll do the first method where we locate the vertex and then just find one point. I think that's a little bit easier. So we'll save part A for just a minute where it says describe the transformations from the graph of the parent function. So we're gonna locate the vertex first. So remember our vertex is at H, comma k okay now be careful here because this says plus one but remember what does that tell you to do that tells me to go left one so really h is negative one and k is four okay so that's my vertex so now i could graph that point negative one one two three four okay there's my vertex now <clears throat> a couple things i could note about this i see that a is negative so my absolute value graph should be opening down so this vertex right here should be my maximum point, the highest point on my graph. Okay, now what we can do is just pick an x value and plug it in for into our equation, solve it for y, and that'll give us a point. Well, we've got when x is negative one, that's our vertex. So let's just plug in zero, right? So when x is zero, so let's find the g of zero. So we'll say negative three times zero plus one plus four. Zero plus one is one. Absolute value of one is just one. Negative three times one would be negative three, and negative three plus four would be one. So that means we have a point at zero comma one. Okay, so we have that point right there. Now remember we said our vertex is, there is an imaginary line that cuts right through our vertex, right? It looks just like that. So now what we can do is reflect this point right here over the line, and we can put a point right there. Okay, so now we are able to draw our absolute value graph. So there's one point or one side of our graph and there would be the other. And we're done, we've graphed it, okay? So this method is a little faster, it's a little easier. Um, it's, we just plot the vertex, find one point and then reflect that point over the line of reflection. Okay, now the other method that we could use involves the transformations, right? We could do one transformation at a time. So let me clear this up a little bit and we'll look at our transformations, which is actually gonna help us answer this first part here, right? It says describe the transformations, okay? So we're gonna look at our, our uh, equation here, negative three times the absolute value of x plus one plus four. And let's think back to our steps. Remember the first thing we wanna do would be translate horizontally. So we're going to translate and that says plus one, so this is gonna be one unit left. Okay, that would be the first thing that we're gonna do, okay? So let's graph these. Let me put my 
parent function on here in black. Okay, so my parent function is just f of x is equal to x, or the absolute value of x. And so that would be our parent function there. So now in this light blue color, let's shift our graph one unit left. Okay, so we're gonna put this point here, and we would have a point here, 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 right? So we can make our graph there. Okay, so that's us doing the first transformation, okay? So now next, what we would do, um, we see we have a three outside. It's a negative three, right? But let's just, let's just deal with the three first. So this would be to vertically stretch our graph by a factor of three, okay? So vertically stretch by a factor of three. What does that mean? That means we're gonna take our points and we're gonna move them up by a factor of three, right? A multiple of three. So our vertex is still gonna stay in the same place. But now instead of having a point at zero, one, we're gonna have a point at zero, one times three. So one, two, three, zero, three, okay? Instead of having a point at one, two, we'll have a point at one, two times three. So one, six, three, four, five, and six. So this will be part of our graph, right? That is our, our one of our rays, okay? So now, since we talked about our vertex being on this line of reflection, we could reflect these two points over, right? So we'd have a point here and we would have a point right there. Okay, so now you notice our graph is a lot more narrow because we vertically stretched it by a factor of three. Okay, so now we have the negative sign there. So that means we're gonna reflect over the x axis, okay? So we're just gonna take our four points that are above the x-axis and move them below. Our vertex is still gonna stay in the same place, okay? So now this point right there is one, two, three units above the x-axis, so it'll be one, two, three units below. Same with that point, three units below. These points here are six units above the x-axis, so they'll be one, two, three, four, five, six units below and our vertex will still be in the same place. Okay, so now we are almost done. Um, so now our final step will be to do this plus four, which means translate four units up. Okay, that color might be a little hard to see. Let's change that up a little bit. Let's go yellow. Uh, Let's do purple here. Okay, four units up. All right, so now in purple, all right, let's translate this four units up. So now my vertex is gonna move one, two, three, four, four units up, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we just moved each of our points four units up. Let me fix that line. There we go. And we have our final graph. Okay, so now what we could do is we could take away some of these other steps, right, how we got there, right? Take away our, our red there, take away this one, the light blue. We're gonna leave the black because that remember that was our parent function, but we'll take away these others here. Okay. All right. So we started with our parent function and <clears throat> notice our where our vertex is located. Negative one, four, right? Same as in method one. And we have a vertical stretch, so our graph's a lot more narrow. We reflect it, our graph is opening down now, and we translated it four units up. All right, and that is how you graph an absolute value function in vertex form.